What's up guys, today is Tuesday, which means that it's time for another live Q&A all about eBay and Amazon dropshipping. Today is extra special because we're gonna be talking about the eBay summer 2018 seller update. We're gonna go into that first. I'll show you guys all the updates, what's important, what you need to know, and then make sure to stick around after that because I'll be doing live Q&A. Any questions that you have about eBay, Amazon, dropshipping, I'll answer them for you live. If you're watching this later, make sure to leave a comment with your question and I'll answer them next week during my next live Q&A, which I do every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern here on the YouTube channel. If you don't wanna miss out on that, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen right now. Okay. Where'd this go? There we go. And about the summer, uh, the 2018 summer seller update. This is what you need to know in order to be a successful seller going forward on eBay. So eBay breaks down this update into four categories here. Here we have inventory optimization, selling metrics, simplified returns, and eBay stores. So let's first look at the inventory optimization. I'll tell you what's important in here. So this is basically them talking more about their catalog system. If you've been following eBay's updates, you'll know that they are uh, trying to implement this catalog system whereby all the items in eBay um, can be viewed within their catalog, which is called, so that if the buyer chooses, they can see, let's say, all the you know Apple Watches, uh, all the listings for Apple Watches in one listing, and they can just choose the variations uh, within that listing. Uh, they think it would be a more simplified process for the buyer. So that's what they're trying to roll out. In this update, they're saying that in the middle of August, they're going to ask us to suggest edits and additions to the catalog. I guess they want us to do their work for them. And they say with by mid-August, you can start to align your listings with the catalog, um, any listings that you have. And by mid-September, you must comply with the requirements and I misspoke before. It's only for these categories right here that I just highlighted. Um, previously, none of these categories affected me or impacted me, but going forward, I see that some of these will possibly impact us as eBay dropshippers, cardio equipment maybe, humidifiers, uh, some appliances, portable fans, um, space heaters. These are things that I know I've sold in the past and a lot of you guys might have sold as well. So mid around August and September, I'll be making videos explaining what we have to do to comply with this. Um, not really a big deal, so nothing unexpected here. And the other thing that they did point out is that they will be making suggestion, suggestions to us in the seller hub. So as these new updates roll out, as there's items that we should be adding to the catalog, they're gonna let us know inside the uh, seller hub saying, oh, this item and this item should also be added uh, as well, okay? So let's see, there's something else they said here um, that we'll have, they're gonna reclassify their categories and they're going to suggest which new categories things will have to move into and they're gonna automatically move some items into new categories if things aren't moved into the correct categories, they do expect us to manually go in and do that. And what that's gonna look like, I'm not too sure. So basically a lot of times with these updates, eBay isn't 100% clear on exactly what they expect or want or what things are gonna look like when they actually roll out. So we just kinda of have to wait and see. Also their timelines move quite a bit. Um, we've already seen that with a few things. But let's look at another update that they gave about eBay stores. Um, not much that I want to talk about here that's really going to impact me as an eBay dropshipper. The only big change that I will mention is that you have to have an item listed in your store for at least 14 days. Part about that. Somewhere down here. You, you must have an item listed in your store for at least 14 calendar days at the same price before you can create a markdown sale. So this is not something I use, so it doesn't really impact me. But let's say you want something, you know, you want it listed at a price of $30, but it's on sale 
for $24.99. You have to have it listed for at least 14 days before you do that. Doesn't impact me, but I know a lot of sellers are upset by that um, who do use that. So let's take a look at the simplified returns. This is the third change. This one is a little surprising to me. Uh, this is them expanding, eBay expanding their automatic return policy. So we saw this, I think it was earlier this year or late last year, eBay talking about uh, trying to make the return process simpler for buyers. So basically this is the way it's gonna work. This chart shows you the buyer requests a return right here and either one of two things happens. One, if it's buyer's remorse, meaning the buyer bought it and they don't want it anymore, they can immediately get the option to print a label. Now, hold on a second. I'll explain more about that in a second. If it's something like um, the uh, you know wrong item received or item was damaged when it was received, they will immediately get a label that they can print out, but we're gonna get charged for it. And then they have five days to print it and then they return it and then we have to refund them within two days. And then if they, we don't, it's an automatic refund. Not clear if we'll get penalized, if we just let it go for an auto refund or what. So this does seem a little bit concerning to us eBay dropshippers because we don't want the items being sent back to us. Um, we don't also want them to use labels that are paid for by eBay, right? We wanna give them the labels provided by our sources. So you cannot opt out of this. But like I made in a, said in a video that I made in the past, you can check off a box telling um, eBay that in order to approve a return, they have to, you have to give them an RMA, a return merchant authorization number. So that slows down the process a little bit. And I think it would still work here. And the way it would work here is uh, you'll get a message saying a return was started, provide an RMA. Then you contact the buyer, say, hey, I have a free prepaid return label. Use this. Don't use the one provided to you by eBay. This will ensure it gets to the right place. Then um, you can approve the return. The buyer uses your label. And when eBay's label isn't used, I'm thinking that as long as the label isn't used, you'll get refunded for the cost of that label. Uh, but I will. that's something we'll be looking into more. Uh, into the future, but that should work. The other thing that I'm going to do is make sure that anytime an item is delivered or at least when it's uh, mailed out, um, there's a way inside TrackerBot, which is a software that I use to automatically upload uh, tracking numbers from Gmail into my eBay account. And there is a link to that in the description of all my videos, TrackerBot. They have a way to automatically send a message to a customer as soon as the item is mailed out. And in that message, I'm going to put if you're unhappy with this item, do not open a return case, contact me and I will give you a free prepaid label to return it. And that way I avoid the return process on eBay and I, I kind of step around this whole step. That's my thought going forward, but I'm gonna be exploring more about that and I'll make a more in-depth video and, because that's gonna roll out in July. Um, in August of this year, they're going to uh, finally narrow down the return policy options. This was something that was supposed to be done already, but like I said, eBay is always shifting their, their timelines, don't really have everything together over there. So if you're offering 14 day returns or 30 day returns with a restocking fee, it's automatically going to move to 30 day returns without a restocking fee. So you don't have to do anything. This is gonna be done automatically. Um, you can also offer free 30 day returns, although I kind of advise against that personally. And the other update is that if you give, if you do give free returns, then you have the option of making it not free for international returns. So that option is available to you. Now, this is something, um, well, let's move on to seller metrics. Now, this one might be the most, most interesting update in July we're going to begin to see inside the, our seller hub how often items are returned for item not described or item not received. And starting in September, if we have too many of these, eBay said they're going to extend our delivery times and impose an additional fee on us. Now, why they would extend the estimated delivery time for us, I don't quite understand and how exactly this is going to be measured, I'm unsure. They do say that if 1% of your transactions 
um, fall within this category of item not received or item not as described, you'll, you'll be imposed a 4% fee, which is really high. And again, I'm not really sure how they're going to measure it. You know, this is really unfortunate because a lot of people put item not described just because they want a free return. So that kind of forces us to offer free returns, even if um, we don't want to. Um, so I'm not really happy about that. But going forward, what I am going to do to help fix this is provide good customer service. And again, try to prevent people from opening return cases. You know, send that message to TrackerBot, letting them know that, um, uh, that the item has been sent out. And if they want to do return to message us first, and maybe I misspoke before, maybe I, I should do free returns. This is where it encourages people to select off something like, oh, I just don't want the item in order to return it. And hopefully that prevents this from happening. I think this is really unfair because again, a lot of people choose item not described or, or the item was damaged just because they don't want the item and, and decide to return it, right? The most interesting thing here though is kind of buried down here at the bottom is something about zip codes. Um, they, you know, in the past, we had a little problem with zip codes on eBay, where eBay, where in the past, a lot of us put down as the item location anywhere in the USA or somewhere in the USA or multiple locations. eBay turned around and said, you can't do that and actually started to take down people's listings for that. Now they've kind of confirmed that by saying you need to have a valid zip code. However, they also say if the item you're selling is located in multiple locations outside the US or you use a freight, you are not required to provide a zip code in your listing. So now this kind of tells me that I can put multiple locations and it's fine. So now it's in writing. So that's probably what I'm going to go back to doing. And I can't understand how they could penalize us for this if they say it right here. Now, the last thing that I forgot to mention inside the returns is that in addition to not being able to opt out of this, you can, they say that you can um, choose a different return location than your actual location, but they don't show you how to do that. It's inside the F FAQ here. And where is it? Um, yeah, somewhere in here. And then it, you click on a link and the link doesn't take you anywhere. It, I mean, it does take you somewhere, but it's not helpful. It doesn't explain to you what to do if your actual location is different from the location that they should return it to. So again, not very helpful eBay. They should fix that so we can get more information about what is going on here. So let me um, exit the screen share and see what questions people have today about that or anything else related to eBay or Amazon drop shipping. Okay. Okay, somebody's asking if I'll be at eBay Live this year. I will not be at eBay Live. I actually have a wedding to go to, so I can't make it this year, unfortunately. Yeah, the new update just came out. Brian's here from Charlotte, North Carolina. Rick says I must be on my boat. Yeah, Alice says, who will honestly say they changed their mind? Talking about that return policy. And yeah, that's the frustration for me as well. Um, I'm hoping that if we offer free returns, um, that will prevent that from happening, but we'll have to see what actually happens. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I do have some great questions um, in here. And somebody's asked, Nancy's asking, what is eBay Live? It's just a big event. I think it's somewhere in the mid, I think it's like near, don't quote me on this. I think it's in Las Vegas this year um, in July, I think. So Mike had a question. Mike was asking me, how much money do you need to get started with eBay drop shipping? And in my opinion, uh, eBay drop shipping, um, you really don't need too much money to get started. The real cost to get started is to, um, the real cost to get started with eBay drop shipping is really just to be able to float some money to buy the products while people, um, while you wait for PayPal jail to be over it. So when you first start out in PayPal jail, uh, you're going to be in PayPal jail, which means that for the first three months, 
um, the items, you're going to get paid for items. And then it's going, you're not going to get actually get the money released to you from PayPal until the money is, um, until the item is actually delivered. Once the item is delivered, the, the money will be uh, released to you. Now, in the meantime, you, you'll have to find a way to float that money, in other words. So you have to have credit cards or enough cash to cover you for that time period. So that's going to look like um, uh, probably just a couple hundred dollars to do that at first. You know, your sales are going to be slower at first anyway. Or if you have excellent credit and you know how to manage credit cards and just uh, a good credit card will be fine because you should get that money paid out to you by the time you have to pay the credit card anyway. So D says, um, Paul, I know in your last video, you said that you should take down listings that are over two months old with no listings, with no sales. But what do you do if multiple people are watching? Well, D, that's a great question. But to that, I've always ignored viewers, to be honest. Because in my opinion, viewers don't matter. It's buyers that matter. And that's all I care about is whether people are buying the item or not. So I still delete it, even if there's viewers or people have are watching it. If I said eBay jail, I apologize, I meant PayPal jail. Yeah. Um, so dropship professor, that's Bill, Bill's here, says, are you going to change back to multiple locations now or waiting till July? I'll probably call, I'm probably going to call eBay about this tomorrow and ask them what's up with this because they're being very contradictory right now. Um, I'll get an update from them. I'll report back to you guys. I would like to change it back to multiple locations, but who knows what they want with this because it's all over the place. Yeah, Mike Mike said the same thing. Mike said he talked to an eBay representative and she said that you have to have a zip code. And now the seller update says you don't have to have one. So very confused about this as well. Okay. So I had another question from Dan. Um, Okay, so Dan, also in reference to my last video where I showed you guys how to create a promoted listing campaign, Dan said, as you add items into your store, what do you do with the new items? Now, there's two options here. And the easiest thing to do, which I do, is at the end of every week or the end of every couple of days, I'll take all the new items and add them to a new campaign. The other thing that you could do is edit your existing campaign edit that campaign and put the new items into it. That's a little bit more complicated because you actually have to download a spreadsheet, make changes to it and re-upload it. Um, I've never actually even tried it, to be honest. I just think it's so much easier to do it the first way I described it, which is starting a new campaign over and over again. Yeah, it might be a pain, um, but that's just a way to do it. A third option would be to end the first campaign and start a new one and put everything into it. And that's another option as well. Okay. Luca said, um, do I ask a customer to return an automatic return case? So this is kind of in reference to what I was talking about before about the automatic returns. So right now the way it works is if a buyer is returning an item for a buyer's remorse, just meaning they don't want the item anymore or they bought the wrong item, whatever, that, not whatever. If they don't want the item or they ordered by accident, things like, that, things like that, not like the item was damaged or is the wrong item, buyer's remorse, then eBay will automatically approve the return. And usually they'll have the option to, autom to right away print out a return label at a cost to them and ship it back to me. I've set it up so they first have to get a re an RMA from me. And that kind of delays the process long enough for me to contact the buyer and tell them to, to not print out a label. And I give them a free return label to use themselves, right? With that option, I, they don't close the return case. Um, it proceeds forward, but they don't print out the label. They don't use the label. They don't buy a label. They just use my label instead. So Jack, uh, no. Digital Dollar had a bunch of questions for me. Um, so I'm gonna answer those questions. And I'll let you know. One of the questions was that he saw a lot of, a lot of um, 
listings with titles that said things like free shipping or new item, things like that, and wants to know how that impacts sales. So in my experience, putting something like free listing, free shipping or new into the title is kind of like a cop out. It's kind of a way just to fill up all the characters without actually putting any work into finding uh, like good keywords. Now, if there's just not enough keywords, if there's an item that for some reason, or this does happen, there's some reason that it's just not a lot of keywords for this item, then yeah, you could put them in. It's not gonna harm it in my opinion, but it doesn't really help too much putting something like free shipping or new or no tax in there. Uh, Digital Dollar also asks, how many photos are the, are the best to have for a listing? eBay, uh, from what I understand, they want to have as many photos as you can. So if you could have 12 photos in there, that would be great. Um, obviously, you don't always get 12 photos. So what some people do is they repeat the photos. So it fills it up. I don't think there's any harm in doing that if you can do that and you find a way to scale that and make that easy to do. I do know some repricers will do that for you automatically if you want, but not all of them. He also asks if the order of the keywords in a title matter. And yes, I believe that they do to a certain extent, only to the extent that I believe that the first couple words or so are really the most important. So you want the first three or four words to fully describe the item on their own. So it could be something like, um, like a small roofing hammer might be the three most important words to really describe it. And the rest of the title can be other keywords that describe uh, like what kind of hammer it is or more details about the hammer like that. Okay, so another question about from him asking about how important is it to really make your store look professional? So you do get a store with eBay, um, you know, like a storefront and you know, you have listings and how important is it to make that look professional? I don't really worry about my storefront too much because few buyers actually go there. Most buyers buy directly from the listing uh, search results that they see on eBay. So I do think that the listing is important. You want that to look professional and nice looking. I, um, so a lot of listing softwares will give you templates that will make your listings look really awesome, really clean. So I recommend that you use those to the best that you can. Okay, Utopia said, I had a customer buy something from my eBay store, they paid by PayPal, and then email me quickly in two minutes, not wanting it. What should I do, Paul? So Utopia, you should really cancel the order. If someone contacts you that quickly, I when someone contacts me that quickly, I always cancel the order for them. If the item has been ordered already, I definitely don't cancel it. It's already ordered by, usually it takes me a few hours before the VAs actually place the order. So if they waited that long, it's too late. They'll have to refuse the package or ship it back once they get it. Uh, Dahlia says, eBay didn't ship back the item and the time is up. The case is still open. How can I have the case closed? Yet yeah, you can call eBay and they will close out the case for you so you never receive the item back. Okay. Um, Saki says, Amazon gift card discount, how to use. So I'm not quite sure what you're asking, but if you're asking how to get a discount on Amazon, the two best ways I know to do it, an Amazon Prime credit card, that will give you 5% off. The other option is to reload gift cards onto amazon.com. If you reload gift cards, you do get a a 3% discount, I think it's 3%, not 2%, 3% discount on Amazon uh, for, for reloading it. So um, you upload $100 and you get another $3 uh, credit. So you get $103 credit. Okay. All right. And, uh, Okay, it's two. So Ben says it's 2%, not 3%. So thank you, Ben, for clarifying. I always forget if it's two or three. 
Okay. Thomas says, uh, Paul, I love your webinar. You guys like this information. If you um, got some value out of this or information, new information about the update, please give the video a thumbs up, a like. I would really appreciate it. Uh, that's right underneath the video if you guys want to do that. But Thomas asks, uh, I use DSM and I just signed up for SKU Grid. Can I use both or is it a little overwhelming to use both? So Thomas, both of them have differences. Their items onto eBay and they both reprice items. DSM tool tends to be cheaper. SKU Grid tends to be a little bit more expensive um, in my experience. SKU Grid is also a little bit more confusing because they use a credit system where DSM tool is just a flat cost, which is another reason I like DSM tool. DSM tool also has some other built-in features that SKU Grid doesn't, but SKU Grid does work with a ton of different suppliers and DSM tool is a little bit more limited, but I found that it works with all suppliers I want it to work with. DSM tool also has a messaging service built in, so you can answer eBay messages directly inside DSM tool. DSM tool also lets you uh, see all your orders and actually has a way to help you order your items directly in there as well. Uh, that's why I prefer it. It's really great to use with your virtual assistants as well. Um, Skewer is not bad. It's just not, for me, it's not as robust as DSM tool. And I just find it to be more expensive and a little bit more confusing to use. So that's why I recommend DSM tool. There is an affiliate link in the description of this video if you do want to check that out. And you do get 50 free listings if you go through that link in the description of my video. And Mike is asking if Simply Best Coupon is paying people on Home Depot yet. Mike, I do know that I just got a payout from giving assistant uh, for a few months back. And I did hear word from them that they are going to be reimbursing us for the Home Depot cash back that was taken away from us about a month ago or more than a month ago. They are going to be paying that back to us within the next seven to 10 days. And that was a couple of days ago. So any day now I'm waiting for it. I actually haven't checked today, but yesterday it wasn't up yet. Okay. Um, Jack says Home Depot is your supplier and we know that there are like five or six states that Home Depot doesn't ship to. How do we block those states in the US? Jack, I don't, um, I don't know exactly what you're talking about because Home Depot, the only states you don't ship to are Alaska and Hawaii and Puerto Rico is not a state, but they're states that you're not tax exempt in. That's a little bit different. So if that's what you're asking about. That's a little bit different, but they do sh still ship there. Andre says, when you try to get 10% for each item, does that include cash back? That's really up to you. If, if you want a 10% margin, then you could factor in cash back if you want, uh, or don't factor in cash back if you think it's, um, you rather just think of that as a bonus. Okay. Donna says, is the campaign fee on top of the final value fee? So in other words, when you do a promoted listing campaign, let's say you run it at 1%, is that on top of the final value fee? Yes, so you have to pay the final value fee and pay the campaign fee. But I suggest just raising the price um, for the campaign fee, uh, raising the price after you start a campaign. Utopia says, when I ship items using Walmart, do I, should I use an account or should I do a guest checkout? That's really up to you. If you do have tax exemption at Walmart, then you want to use your account so that you do get the tax exemption. If you don't use your account, you can't get tax exempt because um, it's not, it's only linked up to your account. Okay. Kong says, I have a case where their shipments where the item shipped from Amazon using Amazon Logistics and it's untraceable on eBay. I'm losing that case. How do I resolve it? I suggest that you use TrackerBot. Again, I talked about this earlier. The link in it, link to it is in the description of this video. That is an affiliate link, but I only recommend it because I really love it and I use it myself and it works really well. So with the, the great benefit of that is that they now have something built in. So it's able to track Amazon um, logistic uh, items that were shipped out. That way you don't lose those cases anymore.
Uh, Jorge says, have you ever had a customer try to scam you saying they never received the item? Yeah, absolutely, that happens. And all you have to do is show eBay that the item was shipped out and delivered and you win those cases. Those are item not received cases. You'll win that case as long as you show that the item was delivered. So any item not received case that was open, take it seriously. Make sure that there's a valid tracking number for it and you're fine. If there's not a valid tracking number, then contact the source, tell them this item wasn't delivered, where's the tracking number. If they can't answer you, they're gonna refund you. Then you can go around and turn around and refund the customer at no loss to you. Okay. So Utopia says, I tried to ship out two items from Walmart. They do not offer um, split shipping. So ship to multiple addresses to get free shipping. That's correct. They do not do that. Kong says that he likes Dropship Beast. Dropship Beast is another software like SkewGrid and DSM tool that I talked about. I've never used Dropship Beast. I do plan on checking it out at some time in the future, but I haven't used it personally. A lot of people have said great things about it. That's the most I can say. I don't want to recommend it or not recommend it because I haven't used it, but a lot of people have liked it as well. Okay, Nancy says, why don't you ship to Hawaii or Alaska? I don't ship there because my sources don't ship there. Okay, a lot of great questions. Eric has a great question here. Eric says, how do you paste customer information faster into Home Depot? I have two suggestions for you, Eric. One is a extension, I've mentioned this before, a Chrome extension called Permanent Clipboard. So what you do is you copy down, you copy the person's name and then without leaving the eBay or DSM tool, you then copy the address, so the first line of the address, then you copy the, the zip code. Then you go over to Home Depot and you right click, it will say permanent clipboard and you can, it will show you all the things that you just copied as separate little entries and you select the one that you want. So then you select the name, then you select the address, the address field, it makes it go a little bit faster. It'd be great if somebody would build a script for that or some sort of plugin to do that. Um, That'd be something really cool, but I don't know how to do that, unfortunately. The other recommendation is just to get a VA to do it. Pete is here. Pete says, hey, Paul, enjoying the course so far. Just set up DSM tool. Welcome, Pete. It's great to have you. Okay. Ben says, how do I use cash back? Do I use like a top cash back website or do I use gift cards? Those are two separate things, Ben. So I use a cash back website called Giving Assistant or Simply Best Coupon. I think they're both pretty great. I have do have a link to Giving Assistant in the description of this video. That's an affiliate link. Um, so I do get a small commission if you use that, but you get $5 just for signing up through that link. And I do recommend it because that's the one I use and I love it. I also like Simply Best Coupon though. And top cashback is just one that I don't use. I'm sure it's fine. Gift cards, you, what you do is you buy a discounted gift card. So you'll buy like a $100 gift card for $98, you save two bucks. You do that like a bunch of times and you, you know, get a bunch of money. And it ends up saving, it ends up you know, growing, even though it doesn't sound like a lot, right? So that's a little uh, different. You might wanna go to a website like raise.com for that. Um, and then you can use that gift card to make the purchase on the supplier's website and still get cash back. A lot of websites say now that you don't get cash back if you buy with a gift card. Whether that's actually going to be enforced, I'm not really sure because there's been some issues with Home Depot cash back. Um, once that's all resolved, we'll have a better idea of whether cash back is still allowed with gift cards. Okay. Um, okay. I have 300 listings. What will happen to them if I downgrade or cancel my eBay store subscription? Benny, that's a great question. If you downgrade your store subscription, let's, and, um, let's say you now only get 50 free listings. Your, your listings will still be up. They'll still exist, but you'll be charged a, um, insertion fee every time those items relist themselves. And if you do good till cancel, cancel, they'll still relist themselves. They'll keep doing it. So you'll be charged 
uh, for each of those 250 listings. Adam is here, says, good to be here. We have 160 people in here. Only 45 have given it a thumbs up. So if you guys are liking this content, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, that's a great way to give back. I really appreciate it. Nancy says, can you use two cashback websites at the same time? In parentheses, she says, no greed here. I understand that. So you wanna, you wanna uh, maximize this as much as possible. There are some people who say that you can stack cashback websites by opening them up in separate windows. Not gonna lie, I've tried it, it hasn't worked for me. And from what I hear, these websites, it used to kind of work, but people have gotten much, the websites have gotten much better at identifying it and preventing it from happening. So I'm sure somebody has found a workaround, but it's not something that is allowed. So I'm, I'm not even gonna try it anymore. Chewbacca 500 is back in the house. Welcome Chewbacca. Excited to see you Thursday, man, at the premiere of the Han Solo film. So uh, big Star Wars fans here in the Hustle House. So Troy says, can you become tax exempt on Walmart and Home Depot? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Adam asks a great question, Adam. Thanks for this question, I really like it. What do you do if a VA isn't doing exactly what I ask, but I think she has potential? Do I need to keep training her? So Adam, what I would do is you gotta talk to her. And from the very beginning, when you first hire your VA, you gotta set the right expectation right from the get-go. So let them know right away, these are my expectations. This is what I want you to do. This is how I want you to do it. And if there is a problem, I'm gonna let you know and I'm gonna expect you to fix it right away. And if you don't, um, then we could have a problem. If, if, it's, if it keeps happening at that point, I will have to reconsider um, your employment, so to speak. Not trying to be harsh, but you're running a business here. You need to, things done the right way. So if she's not doing it the right way, talk to her. Uh, let her know she's not doing it right. Ask her if she needs further training and what she's confused about, and why she's not getting it. Just know that there are plenty of virtual assistants out there who can do this job. I guarantee you're gonna find someone who knows how to do it really well. Every single VA I've hired has required some training because I want them to do it a specific way, my way. It's my business, that's the way I want them to do it. So their experience is really helpful, it's really relevant, but it always requires some training to get them exactly the way that I want them to. Can you use more than one gift card for one item, like multiple gift cards on a higher ticket item? Yes, you can. Um, with Home Depot, um, there is a limit I believe it's 10 and there's usually a limit for all the websites, but you have to check each one individually. Okay, Utopia says, I drop ship in the morning and have a part-time job in the evening. How do I get my taxes ready? First of all, Utopia, great hustle. I know what it's like to do drop shipping on the side while doing a nine to five job or, or it sounds like you're working late. So that you know, sounds like it's even harder. So good for you for doing that. Um, a lot of people don't have the, you know, the tenacity to really go after it and get what they want. Um, they just make excuses saying, I already work a job, I work late. Sounds like you're not taking any excuses like that. So good for you, first of all. And then you're asking about taxes. How do I get taxes ready for next year? Can I claim my purchases from using my personal debit card as a reseller? So Utopia, um, when you form a, an official business, like a, a corporation, you really want to keep your business and personal assets separate and your business and personal expenses separate with different credit cards. That's a requirement. When you're doing it on your own as a sole proprietor, like it sounds like you are, you don't have to do it that way, but I really recommend that you do. Maybe use one credit card or one debit card just for your um, eBay business just for your purchases. That way you have a very clear idea. Okay, these purchases, I I resold these. These are for reselling. Um, and that's gonna be really important come tax time. You wanna keep that all separate and as clear as possible for either yourself or your accountant, whoever does it. Okay. 
So Pete says, when is a good time to hire a VA as a new drop shipper? Great question, Pete. So Pete, what I recommend that you do, there's, there's so many different schools of thought here. Um, and you really gotta think for yourself, what, at what point are you getting to the point, I guess you could say, at what, when, sorry, let me start over with that one. Sorry guys. So Pete asks about when's a good time to hire virtual assistants. Pete, I would say to you, when you get to the point where you feel like you're doing the same task over and over and over again, it's taking you so much time, you don't have enough time to concentrate on what's really important, which is growing your business, because you're spending so much time, you know, listing the same, doing the same listing process over and over, or doing the same order fulfillment over and over, that you don't have time to work on growing the business, that's when you have to hire a virtual assistant, because your store is never gonna grow, your business is never gonna grow at that point if you don't hire virtual assistants. All right, Tiago says, I made my first tax exempt sale yesterday, Paul. $70 profit. Thank you for your guidance. Congratulations, Tiago. So excited for you. That's awesome. $70 profit is incredible. Way to go. Okay. You meant, okay, one of these you mentioned that you undercut back down the price if someone starts sniping your items and undercuts you. How many, how do you manage to track all that undercutting by other sellers? Uh, so we just, so this question is from someone, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I don't really read the Russian alphabet. So I apologize. Um, but you said, you asked, um, I mentioned in the past video that if someone snipes me, undercuts me, that I'll retaliate and undercut a lot of their listings. So how do I deal, how do I track that? Well, it's really just about statistics. If I see an item that was selling really well and isn't selling well anymore, I'll go in and track what happened, see if someone else is sniping me. And that's really the way that we keep track of that. Okay. Okay, Adam says, I have three sources now and wanna add a fourth source. Can, will that be tough to handle when sales pick up for all the sources? Um, Adam, it can be a little bit, not too bad because your repricer is going to tell you what the source is. It's really about coordinating with your virtual assistants. If you have virtual assistants, um, and you really should, it's really about coordinating with those virtual assistants to make sure that they know how to order these items from all the websites. Personally, what I do is I have separate VAs for each source. Um, that way these ones handle all the Home Depot, these ones handle the Walmart, and these ones handle the Amazon orders. It just streamlines the process and prevents them from having to start one source, stop, start another source. It kind of speeds things up a bit. Okay, Nancy uh, was talking about how she keeps her finances separate. And she says that she prints out everything that I sell and keep it separate. Really smart idea. It's a really great way to do it. Okay. Jorge says, if I drop ship, how do I handle my taxes? Kind of covered this before. I keep everything separate. I give it to an accountant, uh, CPA. I don't do it myself. And uh, he does it all for me. Okay. Um, Mike says, do I have any update on the eBay lawsuit from Israel? Was that real? So Mike, I did speak to the lawyer that's on that case. I spoke to him personally, um, short conversation, but just to get an idea of whether this was all real, this is real. They're really doing this. Um, they really filed a lawsuit against eBay, uh, in Israel and, um, they filed for emergency relief. It wasn't granted, but the, the, um, the main lawsuits now going forward. So I don't know how long that's going to take. So we'll wait and see. Personally, I doubt they'll win it, but I don't know anything about this area of law. Just, just my, um, general observations of it. Um, I feel like eBay is well within their right to do whatever they want on their own platform. Um, whether that's a good business decision is another uh, matter, but from what I've seen, this is a real thing that they actually are suing eBay in Israel.
Okay, Mike says, is a dropshipping Titans course relevant in 2018? Mike's talking about my course, Dropshipping Titans. Yes, it's absolutely relevant. I made it this year and I'm updating it as new things come out. Obviously, there's going to be some changes this year on eBay, and I'll make sure that the course stays updated as those changes occur. Okay, how do you deal with it? Okay. So Mike says, have I ever gotten my PayPal account blocked? So yes, Mike, I have. So when I first started, I was in PayPal jail. I explained about that before, what PayPal jail is. And... Once my sales took off, PayPal contacted me and said, we're putting a hold in your account. You can still accept payments, but you can't withdraw any money because we're just a little concerned because you're making so much money now. That was very easy to deal with. I just contacted PayPal. They asked for some documentation. I sent it to them. I had it cleared up within an hour. If that happens to you, I recommend that you send all the information to them, all the documents that they request, then get on the phone with them and don't hang up until they clear your account. It's not a huge deal because like I said, you can still accept payments. So business is still gonna run. You just can't withdraw money until it's cleared up. Jorge says, do you need to create an LLC to become tax exempt? No, you don't. You do not have to do that. Fabian says, hi, Paul, what is cash back? Um, Fabian, I'm not sure what you're asking there. But I do, what I do understand is where you say your course is amazing. So thank you, Fabian. You're welcome, Mike. Glad to answer your questions. Okay, I had another question this week that I wanted to answer from Digital Dollar. Um, he asked this question. He sees a lot of people that instead of listing an item as out of stock, they raise the price of the item by like 200%. So no one's ever gonna buy it for that price. What is that? What's going on with that? And uh, what do I recommend that you do? So a lot of repricers will do this for you. If an item goes out of stock, you have the option of having it either listed as a quantity of zero, so be out of stock on eBay, or the price increases by a large amount. So no one ever buy it for that amount. The thought being that for the second one, that eBay disfavors things that are out of stock. So instead of listing it as out of stock, you raise the price of it. On the flip side though, that's gonna look like you have a really high price, which might affect your ranking because the item is so expensive. So two schools of thought there. I've experimented with both, haven't seen a difference. So I just list it as out of stock and uh, because that's the truth, it's out of stock. Christopher says, isn't drop shipping on Amazon against the terms of service? Uh, Christopher, yes it is. This is the thing though, with Amazon drop shipping, it is against the terms of service. However, it's not heavily enforced as long as you are providing good customer service. So if you're providing bad customer service, they will ban your account. There are ways to get the bans lifted, but um, the best thing to do is prevent it from happening by providing good customer service, not scaling your store up too quickly. That's also raises a red flag for them. So yes, it violates their terms of service, but they're happy to have the sale and to take a cut of it as long as you are providing that good customer service. They'll kind of turn a blind eye to that. Ivy says, what repricers do you recommend? I recommend DSM tool, and there is a link to that in the description of this video. That is an affiliate link, but you will, uh, won't cost you anything extra to use it, and you will get 50 free listings if you use that link. Adam says, have you used eBay's Seller Hub? Is it very useful? I recommend it to everyone. Yeah, Adam, the Seller Hub is great. I love it. It shows you so much information about the uh, health of your account, whether items need to be um, uh, fixed, uh, listings need to be fixed because they're not like secure, that new um, HTTPS kind of thing, which uh, I haven't really made a video about, but um, they'll show you about that. They'll show you if items... Uh, need to be shipped out, messages, it's all there, your sale. So I love the Seller Hub. Okay. Um, 
Maritess says, how many listings do the VA, should the VAs do for four hours a day? My VA only listed six items. So yikes, that's not enough. Um, with VAs and listing, I always say that when I first hire them, I kind of give them some time to get things going, to get the hang of things. Um, don't assume that they're going to do as many listings as you can at first. But over time, they should get much faster at this. I would say that four in, uh, six items in four hours is way too few. Um, there's something really wrong going on there. I would contact them and ask them why they only did six in four hours. Um, something's really wrong there. Okay, JJH is asking about checking out as a guest on Home Depot and tax exemption. So with Home Depot, the benefit of their program, their tax exempt program, is that they give you a tax exempt number that you use. So you can use that number in their store or you can use that number anytime you check out on their website. So you don't have to actually check out through your account. You can check out as a guest and on the checkout screen, enter that number. And that's the way that you can get tax exempt right there. Okay. And Jorge says, if you want to show your appreciation, give a thumbs up, tap the, uh, the like button and make sure to subscribe. It takes no time and uh, you'll get all your answers, all your questions answered in the live Q and A. So thank you, Jorge, for that reminder. We have a lot of people here tonight. So thank you all for coming out 190 three. This is like the second most popular live stream I had. We hit 200, I think two weeks ago, uh, we hit exactly 200. So uh, this is a high number. So thanks everyone for coming out for the great questions. Okay. Does the eBay account name, Darren wants to know, have to match the one giving on PayPal? No, it doesn't. They can be two separate uh, names on there. So Thomas says, can you call PayPal to get out of PayPal jail or do you have to wait? You do have to wait. Uh, the, another way to get out of it faster is to sell more items, make sure you get the tracking number uploaded and that it shows delivered. If you show that pattern of successfully selling items and shipping them out and having them delivered, PayPal sometimes does release you from PayPal jail even quicker. And I, I never reveal how many listings I have currently. So okay Stax is asking me about bed bath and beyond this is something i talked about back in january of 2018 so back in january of this year um what problems i had with them so i thought bed bath and beyond was a great source for a while um, very easy to get uh cash back from them the problem with them is that they do not appreciate resellers and um, I've used some gift cards that weren't working properly for their website either. Um, so those are really the two issues I had with them. Okay, Jane says, Jane sounds like Jane's already an eBay seller and is coming into drop shipping. Wants to know if she should use her main account, your power seller store, or make a brand new separate store. So Jane, this is a great question. What I recommend that you do is that you do start a second store. Um, it sounds like your first store is doing really well and it's like your baby, it's your child, you don't wanna ruin it, I totally get that. I would start a second store, keep it exclusively for drop shipping. There's a number of reasons for that. Um, if you have a second store, um, you can set up your business policies for drop shipping. It helps keep things separate. You can have you know something like a repricer attached to it. Um, that's what I really recommend that you do. Um, Angela says, Home Depot taxes are super high. Any advice? Yeah, you don't have to pay taxes to Home Depot if you become tax exempt. So that's what I recommend that you do. Okay, Dave says, are you back on giving assistant? Are your transactions being tracked yet? I'm not back on giving assistant, even though they say that our transactions are being tracked if we buy from Home Depot. I don't see it yet. 
Um, they, they say that they are being tracked and they'll show up later. I'm gonna wait till everything's fixed before I go back there. I'm using Simply Best Coupon and it's working for me for now. <laughs> Mike's asking if I could be his personal VA. So Digital Dollar also had another question. He asked, what should I choose? The stock photos given by the supplier? Should I make a collage or should I add a watermark to the photo? Um, I would not suggest doing a watermark kind of thing because uh, A, it's not a photo you own and B, it's because um, eBay doesn't like when you put a watermark on an image, even though a lot of people do it anyway. Um, it technically is against their their listing policies. So you can use the stock photos. Like I said, you wanna get as many photos in there as you can. You can also create a collage if you're using something like DSM tool that's really easy to do They make it very simple. Um, I don't always get to answer everyone's questions uh, because the questions come in so quickly. So if I don't hit your question, make sure to ask it again and I'd be happy to answer it if I can. But we are running out of time, so I will have time for a couple more questions if anyone has them right now. Okay. Jack says, if a person is not tax exempt, it seems like there's no chance to profit as the profit margins are very low. Is that right? That's not necessarily true, Jack. Um, there, are, there will still be plenty of items out there that other people aren't selling or that they're selling at high margins that you can still make a profit on. I do think it's really important to become tax exempt because it's going to make it easier for you to compete, uh, easier for you to find items that you can be profitable on. So I do think it is really important. So Christopher says, when I am researching items to sell, I'm looking at other drop shippers, what is the magic number of units sold to make you want to add that product to your catalog? And that'd be five times in the past month. So Utopia says, should I use QuickBooks for my taxes when I get tax exempt? Remember, I have a part-time job. Utopia QuickBooks is excellent. Uh, that's, that's what I use. A lot of new drop shippers use something called GoDaddy Bookkeeping. And you might want to look at this one instead. But the great thing about GoDaddy is that it integrates so well with eBay and PayPal. It pulls the information instantly from those um, two sources. You can also link it up, link it up with many of your credit cards and many of your bank accounts. Um, this is another reason I think it's important to keep a separate credit card because then you can link up just that credit card with GoDaddy bookkeeping and then everything will just be seamless. I don't use it because I have one credit card that doesn't integrate with it. And the other problem with it is that it shows, it has way too much information. It's every PayPal transaction, every eBay transaction, every sale with the credit card. It's just so much information in there. And, um, when I have the amount of sales that I have, it's just so much to sort through. So I prefer using Excel and then I put it all into QuickBooks. So a fish lover and aquarium slash OMG aquascape. That is one heck of a name says if we log into a home Depot account, will it be easier to track all of our returns? Um, not necessarily, uh, it, I pro it is a little bit easier, but it's really not too hard to keep track of them anyway, because with returns, all you really need to process a return on Home Depot is the email address that you use and, or sorry, rather, rather the, um, the order number and the billing address. As long as you have those two pieces of information, you can return an item. You can also track the item as long as you have the email address that you use and the, um, order number. And that all is going to be emailed to you anyway. So I don't think it's really too hard. Uh, I have no problem doing it with guest checkout. So
So Nancy says, again, talking about finances, uh, Nancy says, should the credit cards and checking accounts be a business account only? So Nancy, what I recommend you to do is you don't necessarily have to set up a business account. Once you form, or if you ever form an LLC or a corporation, then that, that entity, the LLC or corporation, you're gonna want that to have a business account. But you can have a personal credit card that you use just for business, but you can set up a business credit card that you use just for the business. Okay, and Ageless Mind says, please make sure to save this video, it's really awesome. All these live chats are saved. You can watch them later by coming back to the YouTube channel. And if any of you guys are watching this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you get a notification every time these videos go live so that you don't miss them. You can participate in the live chat. We'd love to have you guys here. The night's over, it's now nine o'clock, so I'll be ending this video. But if you got some value out of it, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Uh, it was really great, all the questions. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. And if you have any questions before them, make sure to drop them in the comments of any of my videos, and I will answer them in my next live Q&A, which I do every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming out, and I'll see you next time.